Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury. I'm really excited to have you guys here, and this is my first ever episode with all of my new recording equipment. So I recently got a a USB condenser mic, I got a portable voice recorder for my backup, so I'm really excited to have this improved quality and also this portability to make sure that you guys get great sounding podcasts all the time. So today will be the second installment of Stream of Consciousness. So this will be Stream of Consciousness number two. And I will be doing this episode with someone else, so not just me talking for another hour. So tonight, my guest is actually going to be my brother, Evan Drury. So Evan, thank you for being on the show. I'm glad to finally be on. I'm uh, really excited about this podcast. I think it can do a lot of good for a lot of people. Yeah, man. We're, we've been trying to get Evan on for a while, so I'm excited to finally have him. And stream of consciousness is actually something that he helped me come up with. I think Evan was the one who actually gave me the concept of doing things or doing podcasts that are much more free form and really just off the top of your head. And then I thought up the name. And so this was something that Evan helped me create. So we thought, wouldn't it be perfect to have him come on and do a stream of consciousness with me? So since we are coming up on graduation, we thought a really timely topic would be some of the talking a bit about the fears that parents and students face approaching graduation, and then also some of the difficult conversations they have and some advice that we have from our experience that may help parents and students approach these conversations about their futures in a way that's more productive and helps them see at each other's level a little better. We know for parents and students, it's a really tough thing, the whole question of what is my future going to be, and parents want to give guidance, students want their freedom to make their own choices, so there's a lot to it. And so in the spirit of stream of consciousness, that's pretty much all Evan and I have decided was that will be the topic, and then from this point on, it's just going to be free form and flowing. So Evan, to start off, I think I'll just kind of prime us with a question and we'll roll from there, but from your perspective... When you were graduating or when you were going through this process, what do you think were some of your biggest worries as a student from that perspective? Um, that's, that's kind of funny because I wasn't really worried about graduating. I was really relaxed about it and, and I knew, all right, I'm going to graduate and I'm going to travel the world and I'm going to come back and, and figure it out. And <laughs> I sort of knew... I sort of knew the direction I wanted to go too, so that that's helpful. I didn't I didn't think oh, I'm going to come back and look at a million uh, different paths to go down, um, and my path was finance. I knew I wanted to go that that route, and I wanted to work with people and and work on you know helping them retire and and live their life today and 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 you know in retirement. I I like the idea of doing both. And too many people. Sorry. I was going to say, if just for the listeners, what did you major in while you were in school? Finance and marketing. Finance and marketing. I actually, funny, funny enough, I started out uh, doing uh, justice studies. Mm-hmm. No, I, I started out in business, moved to justice studies, then almost went to computer science. And when they said that would keep me in school for another five years, I said, I, and I was a junior at that point, I said, um, you know, I'll go back to business. <laughs> and which I had started out with all along, and uh, you know that's a whole other story. I think we can do on a different podcast, right? Yeah, well, uh, my, my school experiences, but um, so I centered on on finance, and I went and I traveled, and I, I wasn't worried because I wanted to travel and travel light, and that was wonderful. But really, I think what I what I wanted to talk about today between students and parents, and if I ever say kids, referring to students, I'm not calling you kid like you don't know anything I'm just you know uh, I'm just a younger person a slightly a younger, younger person, person than me I'm a, I'm a kid too so <laughs> um, so really I, I'd like to start by focusing on on the student side and you know what I wish I had done or or thoughts that or um, a direction I wish I had taken mm-hmm. while I was in school you know, from freshman year on. Okay. I think too often we we just think, all right, linear path, freshman, sophomore, junior year, just go through 
go through the progression, get your internship, graduate, and you know, right before graduation, look for a job or hope that your internship turned into a job. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's much more empowering to start thinking about what you like earlier. And, and part of finding your job, you know, when people say find your passion, if you're not sure what you're doing, that's that's really tough to do if you haven't been thinking about your passion at all. And so I think part of finding your job and, and what you want to do when you get out of school is finding out about yourself and who you are and what you really like and what's going to drive you and, and motivate you day after day um, and, and enjoy the routine and then want to break out of the routine. And, and so what I wish... It, you, you, like uh, I was just going to jump in there. What I found or what I kind of have thought back on was that there were many times in college when I found myself thinking, okay, I'm going to think about what I want to do or what is it I want to do with the rest of my life. So I would consider those questions for a moment, but the blessing and the curse about college is that there are so many distractions. There's always something going on. There's always an event or a party or your friends want to just hang out and play some video games. So I'd be sitting there by myself considering what these bigger things are. What's the impact I want to have on the world? What is it I want to do with my life? And then all of a sudden my phone would buzz or I'd just be like, oh, you know what, I'll just go out and think about this stuff later. And I was just listening to a speech by Dean Graziosi, who's a uh, absolute legend in the real estate market. And so he was talking about how people just tend to uh, think that success comes later in life or that think that learning has to be slow. And what I thought was fascinating was he talked about his daughter, who he said, I've always been good in math. She inherited that from me. She's a first grader and she's doing problems that she won't even co come near until third grade. And so he said, if you're capable of learning, if you know that it's something you're passionate about, don't wait for other people. You can do it right now. Well, and that, that really does add to what I was about to get into. And um, not even if you're, if you're passionate about it or if you're capable of learning, because a lot of times you don't know what you're capable of until you try. Yep. And so it's really important just to put yourself out there and start doing a lot of different things. And uh, one of those things for me, one of the top things I could recommend to any person at any stage of life is start listening to well, one, this podcast, but after you listen to this podcast, uh, read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss mm -hmm. and listen to his podcast as well. And, you know, what I like about this podcast is you're getting to a lot of different people that we may not know about, and I think stories are very important, and there's a lot of stories out there. That, that we can learn a lot from. While Tim Ferriss has, you know, Tony Robbins and Warren Buffett, all, you know, very great people to learn from, I, I think that understanding the stories that you don't hear every day in the media or, or the, the lives you never heard about that are just as amazing, but maybe not, they don't have the same publicity surrounding them. So that would be my first starting point for anyone looking to expand their mind, expand their life because it will lead you down so many different roads. And, and, and Evan, one, I was going to say to build on that for resources because um, 4 Hour Work Week was a life-changing book for me as well. And Tim Ferriss in general is ha from that point has been one of the biggest influences in my life about how to start a company, how to outsource your life, how to create your big idea. And what Tim Ferriss is, and I, I know I've actually heard him interviewed and he says he doesn't like certain terms that people apply to him, but in a way I'd call him a life hacker because he finds ways to do things faster, quicker, more efficiently. Uh, in his book, The 4-Hour Body, he talks about how to gain 10 pounds of muscle in 30 days, which sounds like science or voodoo, but when you read the book, it's pretty fascinating how he does it. So that's one fantastic re resource is Tim Ferriss' 4-Hour Workweek. And then, to, trust me, read that, get started, and you'll definitely Absolutely. want to get the other books. Another great one, so that one is very tangible. Tim Ferriss is very much uh, action steps and detail and facts. If you want something that's a little more, um, I guess, not, it, it's more of a thought provoker and it's a fic fictional story, it's The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. 
that, oh, that was, I was going to say that. Last time I talked to you, that's book. <laughs> well, see, stream of consciousness. It just comes out. But that book is... I hated reading growing up. I thought reading was stupid. I thought it was something that wasn't for me. The books that we were given in school, I never enjoyed. Maybe one out of all my years in school. I read The Alchemist when I first graduated college, and I couldn't put it down. I was fascinated. I was blown away. And it actually was one of the books that ignited my passion for reading and helped me realize that I do love reading. It's just I have to find the right things. So I just wanted to hit on another resource before you continued. So please go ahead. Uh, you, you, you did a touch on another point, developing a love for reading. It's, you know, I never got it. I always said, you know, it'll take you to faraway places or, you know, whatever, just standard stuff. And I said, shut up. You know, I don't want Yeah, I don't want to read. It's not for me. I, I, I want to play Halo. You know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about these faraway places you speak of. <laughs> but, but really, um, what, I, what I didn't consider was that I would be given so many different perspectives in my life um, and, and how entertaining, you know, someone, I, I was watching a YouTube video and someone was explaining something and they pointed to their head and they said, read now, read as much as you can and pointed to their head again because this is the best movie we make, mm-hmm. pointing to our head meaning imagination. And it, it, tr- it truly is, but um, you, ha- you have to, do it to believe it and and what really started me off on on reading now I, I read from nothing to I did 75 books last year mm-hmm. and I, I do everything on th- through audible um, and I try to maximize downtime and that's time where I'm in traffic I love traffic now <laughs> it gives me time with books and, you know, if I'm cooking and I'm, you know, it's just some regular stuff, I'll just throw it on. If I'm working out uh, or long or running some distance, I'll put on a book because I'm being productive at the same time. And that's what I want to do. I don't always do it. And sometimes it can be a bit much, but it, it just allows me to create time where there wasn't any for, for learning this thing or about this person. Mm-hmm. And, and which then helps me live my life, make more money communicate with people more effectively, which um, it, it just broadened my horizon to a point where I'm, I have so much more fun with all that I've experienced or learned from books and then applied it to job interviews or uh, personal personal interactions, just whatever it is. Um, and Evan, I just, uh, for the listeners, so anyone who's unfamiliar with Audible, Audible is an app that you can download. It's available on both the iPhone or Android systems, and it is a, uh, it's like books on tape for the new generation. So it's uh, literally audible books, and you can download just about anything. It's amazing how many books are put into an audio form at this point. And what you'll find is that many of these books are cheaper because they don't need to pay for the actual publication, the printing, the distribution. It's just an audio file. So Audible is a fantastic – if you're too busy to read, this is a great way to do that anyway. <laughs> so Right, and, and, it's, and that's about the conversation where I don't have time and I make time. There's always a way to make time, and sometimes you don't have to sacrifice other things you're doing. And, and you know what, yeah. Evan? Like to your point about – not liking reading, like you, neither of us liked reading. And I can tell you that I now love reading, but in spite of that, I still find myself avoiding reading because of how the, the mindset that I built up for 20 some years in my life. What's amazing is every time I read, I enjoy it. I love picking up a book. I think it's fascinating. I get, like you said, so many different perspectives and ideas from it. But what's amazing is I'll be going through my day and I'll look at my book and I'll be like, ooh, you know what? I have, other, I have more important things to get done or I don't feel like it. I'd rather play video games. I'd rather do this or that. And what is uh, something that our dad said that was really interesting, he said, you know, Brian, maybe reading could be the most important thing you do that day. Maybe reading that book will be the thing that changes your perspective, that gives you the insight you need. It's just amazing and for everyone listening especially those uh coming up on graduation those kids who are still in college you don't have to wait you don't have to wait till you graduate like you have plenty of time when you're in school for most people to start reading to create time to 
have this new learning and expose yourself to new mentors, new ideas, and new perspectives. And, and you just brought up something um, that I'd like to get into. And, and so I, I mentioned, you know, finding your passion and, and, um, and you mentioned mentors. Well, I, I'd like to uh, bring mentors and networking into finding your passion, your passion. Mm-hmm. And it, it's really um, another tool in, in, that you can use without really having to do any extra work. Uh, is, is finding someone in a field that you're interested in that's willing to talk to you um, and, and hopefully get more in depth uh, on the um, the industry itself and what exactly you need to do to break into anything uh, you want into and maybe even recommend you for something if they have a network of their own that they can then uh, send your resume out to. So mentor is great because you can just learn from all this uh, real life experience, but also then a network. And you can start building a network at any time. And uh, the thing about a network is I don't like to say networking or just network. Build relationships, meet friends, not just meet people. You know, and, and these don't have to be friends you see all the time, but, but people that if you see them, hey, it's great to see you, I'm very happy to see you, let's have lunch or, or something. Not just, oh, hey, oh, how you doing? I, I sort of remember your face. You know, mm-hmm. make, make it, make people that you connect with uh, in some way, shape, or form part of your life so that you have people to reach out to if you need a mechanic or need to know where to find a good mechanic, if you need a job in photography, and you're, you're, and how do I, A, build a photography business, or B, work for a company so I don't have to uh, develop a whole business plan and find clients and whatnot. And, and to my point today, someone uh, from our uh, group of family friends emailed me that their son is graduating in May and you know he had a very specific history degree and it wasn't related to teaching. It was more um, museum curation type thing. And so that's a very difficult passion to find, especially a job opening for, but I just happen to know people through my network that are very much involved in that area uh, mm-hmm. of, of history. So I, and since people did so much for me in my network to get me to where I am today, I'm happy to go out of my way and write a little reminder to myself to make sure this person gets connected with the people I know. And, and so now when we start talking about networking or, or this, this con- these connections of family or friends, now you're, if you get put yourself out there, start talking to people and showing them, hey, I'm a, I'm a good person, I, I really care about people and I care about this, um, you have people willing to work for you. It's so much easier to work to help out a nice person than uh, anyone else and, and so if you just put yourself out there just say hi you never know what's going to come out of it and, and if you try to build true that relationships and show I care about you you're in front of me I, I really value your time and, and you can decide if you do you know as the conversation goes but but if you show people you value them and and, and they value you well, now you're not just sending your resume off into the black hole of career builder or monster or whatever, you know, whatever. You, you have, a, you're building channels where you can, where a resume may mean not even be the big you mentioned before you even send it. And I've seen that happen. It actually happened to me once. Evan, Evan, we, um, hang, right? hang, well, for, first, let me, we, we lost uh, a little bit there. You said a resume will not be what? Um, did I talk about the black hole of monster.com? And yes. But yeah, so I, so yeah, just falling into that black hole. Um, well, well, what I, what I was finishing on was, was that, so you're not, you're not just throwing a resume out there. You're, um, you have so many channels. Mm-hmm. To go down, did I say that too? Yeah. So, all right. So that that was what we missed. But yeah, let me pause you there for a second because a couple great points and a couple things I want to build on. So, 
The first being mentors. So you said finding great mentors, people who are in the field, but to add to that, so something, again, I just listened to this Dean Graziosi speech. Dean was talking about not only finding mentors, but finding mentors who do it, who love it, and who do it well. And he used the example of his parents, and he said, they're not gonna like me to tell this story, but he said, uh, if I wanted to go to find relationship advice, I wouldn't go to my parents because they've both been divorced and remarried multiple times each. He goes, I would go to someone who's been happily married with someone for 30 years and loves the person more every day to find out how they do what they do. So I think it's, it's critical to find mentors, but you can find mentors who will do nothing but scare you off, deter you, tell you it's a waste of time. What's really critical is finding mentors who love what they do, who are passionate about what they do and are finding success because then you can emulate that. You know, Dean Graziosi also talked about, he's like, it's like asking for fine. And Evan, I'm sure you can relate to this being in the financial field. He said, it's like asking for financial advice or about starting a company or some ambitious idea with your friend who's broke on the couch and complaining about why the government <laughs> made them broke. So I think... I think those are really valid and relevant examples, but to the uh, point of building a network. So I think what you said about valuing one person, like I value you and you value me, I think what's even more critical and something that I never understood until I read the book, um, The Education of Millionaires by Michael Ellsberg was, my question was, okay, yeah, great. I want a mentor. How do I even begin to find one? Where do I even get started? Because right. you know, I want to have Tim Ferriss as a mentor, but how do I even begin? So the thing is, you can start. And first off, you'd be amazed how easy it is to contact some people that you might think are untouchable. My, one of my real-life hero, Sean Stevenson, who's one of the mo a world-renowned motivational speaker. He's, he has a doctorate. He's an incredible guy. I called his office to try and set up an appointment and I got him and I was shocked. And I was like, this is, I never in a million years thought that would happen. But so in terms of building your network, one to Evan's point, reach out, start a conversation with somebody. If there is a, if you're in school and there's a professor at your school that's doing something interesting, or maybe a friend that started a business or someone you know that you would just like to talk to, you would be amazed how willing, my dad and my mom always said to us growing up, you would be amazed how willing people are to help you when you just make it known what you want. Again, you're not asking for a handout, but you're just talking about what your goals, dreams, and ambitions are. Now, Michael Ellsberg in his book talks about the best way to create a healthy, strong network is to provide value for others, to give, give, give. Because when you give to them and you bring value to these other people, then they know what you do and they know what you want. The good things will just flow back to you. You won't need to ask, you won't need to beg by providing- Well, that may take, that may take time, so you, you right. have to be patient too. Absolutely, it's not something that's just gonna happen overnight, but by creating value for other people, you will in turn get value back. So in, even in a business, the value you get back is gonna be proportional to the value you create. So that, that, those were just two big things I wanted to uh, build on that you said there, Evan. And, you know, I'm not naysaying it. I, I think it's very important um, going down that path and, and giving to people. And But eventually, you know, there has to be some reciprocation there because yeah. there, there are people, and you mentioned people uh, before, who will just take, 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 and that's, that's it. And, and, you know, believe me, I, I mean, I uh, was looking for a mentor for, geez, five, five six years, something like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have... I have a uh, couple now, and it, it's really fantastic. I'm, I'm learning so many amazing things a every day, it feels. Uh, but, you know, when you're just, when, even when I was trying to break into the financial field and I was working as a bartender, it just, it's tough. Even, and, you know, five, six years is not that long. So some people have to wait longer than that, or, you know, something doesn't work out. Um, a whole myriad of reasons why it may take longer than that. So I acknowledge that that five six years was was pretty quick for for me, and I'm, I'm fortunate. And I'm you know hope I'm going to make the most of it. But be patient, enjoy where you're at, but never stop striving for what you want. Is it, I think the mindset I would like to convey. And Brian, I don't know if you have any sights on on meeting up with people because a lot of times people if they don't get out 
all the time or they're, they're getting out of college and you know they don't know how to create these social situations for themselves, do you have any networking websites? And we may have to go in the show notes later mm-hmm. on your website. But um, are you talk- I, I think um, are like you- meetup, meetup.com is, is one website where you can pick and choose any industry and meet up with people interested in, in meeting up and, <laughs> and discussing topics, I guess, relative to the industry. I haven't used that yet, um, but I, I've heard a lot of good things and, and you know, some people say, oh, well, what wasn't worth it, but so, uh, and Evan, that, are, that's with anything. Are you talking specifically for business networking or are you just talking about meeting people in general? Um, I'm talking about more trying to find direction towards what you want to do with your life okay. and, and careers. Uh, so, so, so what I actually uh, you know, what I was going to say was, uh, in terms of meeting people or actually uh, gaining a mentor. So uh, I spoke with a couple different people at a conference that I went to, very successful in their various fields, and uh, Garrett Gunderson actually is at. Uh, published author. He's very successful in his field. He was talking, I asked him, I said, how do I get to have someone like you or someone at your level of success as a mentor? And he said, read that person's book and then give them feedback on it. So in that way, you're bringing value to this person. But in terms of resources, um, I think LinkedIn is huge. And uh, asking for inter- informational interviews, reaching out to people to talk about uh, just a position. Now, an informational interview, this was something I had never heard of until after I graduated and I was looking for a new job. Um, it literally is just c- reaching out to contact someone to talk about their job, about their company, to find out more about it, to see if it would even interest you. This is not a sales pitch. This is not you going in with a goal or an intent. It is literally just going in and learning. And uh, so in terms of specific sites, uh, Meetup, I think, meetup.com, you said it was? Meetup.com, yeah, you can, you can pick the industry you want to focus on. Yeah, that, that sounds great. That's something I'll definitely include in the show notes. And, um, but One in t- thing, Brian, real quick. Yeah. Uh, I, and this will have to be a show notes thing too, but um, let's just – try to find um I, I i gotta remember what podcast i was listening to earlier this week but it was talking about industry specific network sites and one of them was on richard branson branson's um uh, virgin site one of the virgin sites so i, I really have to go check myself here mm-hmm. see exactly where this came from but it was specifically for entrepreneurs trying to build a business and connect through this this site where richard branson is is putting it on. I don't know how involved he is, but you're 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 putting together a lot of like minds with a lot of drive, and and uh, I, I think that's the whole pur- purpose of networking: getting people together who feel the same way you do about a, a specific industry or area, and really those people love what they do and they're trying to figure it out, or they have figured it out. Some people want to get back. So uh, let's try to. Uh, just include specific if if we can find them. I actually uh, networks or search them on Google. I got one for you. Um, this is partially a network and partially just a resource, but MindValleyInsights.com. If we're talking about entrepreneurs, um, MindValleyInsights.com. Uh, all one word, no dashes. This is not only a network, but joining into the Mind Valley community, which is an internet publishing and marketing company. But it also uh, will give you lots of great tangible feedback on how to market your business, how to start a business, how to reach out and connect. So that I would highly recommend. So meetup.com and mindvalleyinsights.com for two new resources for you guys to try and experiment with. So And not, not, not only um, experiment with or, or, or just, uh, you know, you mentioned Mind Valley as a, a way to look for uh, business support or, or business guidance, but I think a very important thing I learned through all, all this reading and, and um, learning about entrepreneurs is even if you don't want to create your own business and even if you don't want to um, create a product, have an entrepreneurial mindset. Think outside the box, value yourself, and so even if you work in a company, um, think not 
oh, I hope I get a raise someday, not, but think, what can I do to get a raise today? You know, value yourself enough to say, all right, do I think I deserve a raise? Am I doing enough work? And, and a lot of times you can tell um, relative to people around you in the same position. Do I deserve a raise right now? And you might say, you know, I'm just going to go for it right now. Or you might say, what can you say to your boss, what can I do for a raise? I'm already doing this, 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 and this. And so if you clearly define everything you're doing and define your value so that you know it, they know it, and you're expressing, hey, I want to be compensated for the value that I'm bringing, I think it's a very important mindset to develop and that's that entrepreneurial thinking outside the box. So you don't have to start your own business or um, have your own product to be an entrepreneur, have that entrepreneurial thought process. And I think that'll very much uh, serve you well as you go through whatever career you choose. And I think I I was going to say just to build on that, what is a critical component of what you discussed and what I think everyone, everybody has room to improve on is communication. And so in order yeah. to build that relationship to clearly explain, well, first off, it's understanding who you are. It's understanding that you have worth, that you are worth the, the money, the time, whatever it is that you're asking for. That's got to be a clear understanding to start with. But beyond that, it's clear communication with your boss, with your peers, with whoever to say, you know what? I would like a promotion. I would like new opportunities. What can I do to get there? And set clear, measurable targets. You know, if I did this in this time frame, because if your boss just says, well, you know, just uh, continue to improve, way too vague, way too general. If you're interested in learning more about how you can better approach negotiations, how you can better communicate with your bosses on how you'd like to get a, get a raise, Ramit Sethi is a great resource. So Ramit is R-A-M-I-T, Sethi is S-E-T-H-I. And he has a lot of fantastic advice on interviewing, on how to ask for a raise, on how to get new job opportunities. So that's a great a resource. Lot of it is free. And so, yeah, in fact, easy. most of it, yeah, YouTube, he has a free ebook you can download, and he's uh, Oxford educated. I think he's Harvard educated also. I mean, he's crazy. I'd have to double check. I know Oxford, I know but he's uh, he's investigated human psychology for most of his life. He's been fascinated by how people can grow their businesses, uh, get better job opportunities. He's interviewed with top companies like Google and so many more. So definitely a great resource. So what was the you were going to build on your point a little bit more, Evan? Well, actually, I was gonna I was gonna change points okay. now to um, just finish up on the student side and, and then kind of go over to the parent side and bring it all together real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so, finding your passion, everyone says it, and it's just so vague and, and general. It's oh, I don't know what I want to do with my life, and uh, find your passion. And uh, you know, I, I think um, it's. It's so it's so different for so many people, and um, you know a lot of times people may be uh, perceived as whining. Oh, I don't know what I want to do. Like people say it that they're, that uh, someone's saying it like that. Mm -hmm. And I think you even had a UFC fighter on on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, month ago, uh, what was his name? The Spaniard. Uh, Charlie Brenneman. He's known as the Spaniard. That's his UFC name. And yeah, he talked. Oh, oh yeah, go ahead. That interview was phenomenal. I think <laughs> you, you can learn a lot from Charlie, no matter where you are in your life. That's uh, episode, I recommend, episode two for everyone who's curious. <laughs> I highly recommend you check that out. And at one point, um, you're, at, you're going through rapid fire questions and uh, you ask him something and it, it was, what would you give, what advice would you give to people of our generation? And he said, stop whining. And you know, I, I think that that is a very important lesson to give someone who will acknowledge that they're whining, one, uh, and a kick in the ass that someone may need. But on the other hand, I, I think a lot of times, you know, students, parents, uh, bosses, employees, any anyone, a lot of the times we're not really listening to each other. 
So to that point, I'd say, who's whining? Is it that this person's whining or that you're not giving them a chance to really explain themselves? And you've gone into this conversation with a concept of what you think is going on. You're not hearing what's actually going on. And that's not a dig on Charlie because I don't want to get my ass kicked. He's one of the nicest dudes. If you get in the ring with him, though, I'd look, I'd be careful. Get my ass kicking? But no, I think that at any point in time, we just need to take a step back and listen. And I think just if we're going to get into finding your passion and people saying, well, find your passion. Well, that and you're about to graduate college and you've got to figure out, oh, there's so many options. I don't know what to do. And I want to go do I got to pick something for the rest of my life. That's a lot. And so you're in this very emotional state. It's very difficult state. And at the same time, your your parents and, you know, these very well-meaning, you know, nice people that really want the best for you are also in a very emotional state because they want the best for you. And they want to make sure you go out and do something that you can retire on, you can save on, you can have health insurance and and still live a happy life. And I think that too often either side just reacts to an emotion in a discussion rather than actually says, well, what did you mean by that? What are you really saying here? And it takes a lot to realize and not just react with anger or being upset. And Evan, would an example of that be because like I'm pretty sure I know where you're driving at. But so parent sits down with with son or daughter and goes, what do you want to do with your life? And the kid goes, well, I'm not sure, but I think I'd like to be an artist. And then the parent snaps and goes, oh, well, there's no money in that. And da, da, da. Like, is that the type of ki- the type of conversation you're, dis- you're uh, talking about? Well, I, I mean, that can, that can be part of the, the conversation. That's absolutely um, a discussion that can and does occur all the time. And, and I'd say that, you know, uh, you have to pursue what you love and, and you may not absolutely love your job or work or whatever right now. And, and so my suggestion for finding your passion is to find it through experience and through work. And I think we'll get into a podcast about travel and how important that is to finding out who you are and what you want to do with your life. But also, you have to go experience your field. And if you don't know your field and you have, if you have some interest somewhere, start. So the best thing to do is start because it just opens your eyes to a million more things than you ever thought were, were out there. I had no idea how many different uh, job uh, job descriptions there were in the finance field. I, I thought there was probably five when I <laughs> when I graduated, and, and obviously there's there's a lot more. So so really to the the student side of things, just get out there with something you have an interest in. Start there and don't think, well, I got to pick the thing I'm going to do for the rest of my life. No, you're picking the thing you're going to do for right now that's going to lead you to what you love doing and, and you can always continue to evolve and change so that you're living a great life. And, and so as you change, you have picked up all these skills that make you valuable, you feel valuable, you know you're valuable, so you go get what you want. And so you may not know right now, you may not know in a year, but I guarantee you if you start reading books, if you start exposing yourself to more interests you have and get dig down and, and, and go in depth into them, you will find things you love and, and you will find things you love that pay because I think uh, passion is, is great, but if it doesn't support you, then, well, you, you know, that's, you may not like that passion after you're broken and you can't continue to do whatever that is. And, and so, so it, it, it takes some work to figure out what's going to pay and what's not going to pay. And that, you know, you, you never know what's going to work. Well, so I I was I was gonna I, I was gonna like hit on what you were saying right there because so 
uh, in terms of the, the whole topic of find your passion or what are you passionate about, there are so many, I mean, we're inundated with that phrase, that phrase for college kids. The question, what do you want to do with your life is terrifying and one of the most like buzzword type of conversation or questions that you can ask. But in terms of what is your passion? So in Vishen Lakhiani's uh, speech at, I believe it was in Power Now in 2008, I'll have to double check that, but I'll include that in these show notes as well. Uh, he talked about find what it is that you love and whatever that is, there is a way to find a way to make it pay. So it doesn't mean it will be easy. It doesn't mean that it will be very clear at first, but he was up in Canada. I talked about this in a previous podcast. He used the example of, he's like, listen, we're up in Canada and maybe you want to be the world's best maple syrup tester. And he goes, but you could do that and still make a hell of a lot of money doing it, being the world's foremost expert in maple syrup. But you have to find what you love and then go after it. And don't be deterred by other people who are telling you that this can't work or that's not going to work or this isn't a route that you should take because people tend to stay within their comfort zone. They tend to mentally close themselves into what they know or their own experience. And especially if they've had a negative experience related to that, they're going to tend to just throw that your way to be like, oh, uh, most, and that's not all people, but most people will be like, oh, watch out because X, Y, Z. And I would say a couple things that have helped me that I've read, that I've watched in uh, inspirational videos, motivational videos to help you find your passion. So in general, what are those things that you do that when you do them, you just get absorbed, that time seems to pass so rapidly because you're totally focused and in the moment with that thing? That's one indicator. Another is what are the things that make you happy, that make you excited, that even when you're tired and exhausted from a long day, that they get you amped up and energized and you're talking, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe how excited I am about blank. Uh, one more way, this is something kind of an exercise or an activity you could do with friends, is to ask people, what would you do tomorrow if you knew you were going to succeed? And in doing that, most... Great question. It's well, I got it from dad. <laughs> um, and the question at first, people go, Well, that's not realistic. And people go, Well, that's, I mean, it, that would never happen. But if you pause and just take the time to think to the question, What would you do tomorrow? Most people will initially jump to win the lottery or, you know, win a boat or something like that. But then slowly they'll start diving into the things that they truly love. Maybe it's writing, maybe it's dance, maybe they love to skydive. And any one of those things could be a lucrative, productive career that brings you more joy than doing what you think you're supposed to do. It just, well, Brian, yeah. uh, something I, I just like to uh, touch on here, and it's uh, on the parent side of the thought process, yeah. really is um, you don't know everything uh, about every career. And... And what I mean by that is... Like you're saying to the um, parents, like the parents don't know everything, or the kids? Or just everyone? Either, either side. Okay. Either side. You never know the possibilities. Uh, so don't uh, worry about certain path. I, I think you could go down any path and succeed or fail based on, on the person. It's on the person's drive and love and desire to just experience more of life. And... So to, to my point, um, we, we had talked about, um, I think Sir Ken Robinson mm -hmm. talked, talked in, in his famous TED Talk, uh, talks about a ballet dancer who uh, became a ballet dancer because she couldn't sit still in class. So the, the doctor diagnosed her, with, I guess with ADD, uh, said, well, she should be a dancer to her parents. And then she became a very successful and very wealthy dancer. and. Uh, in Europe, and so you know, you'd never equate ballet dancing with being wealthy. And also, uh, I just uh, read the other day that uh, Henry Ford, he started out as an apprentice machinist, and then a little later on, when he was uh, younger, like around our age, he was an, just an engineer. And I don't want to say just an engineer; engineer is a very uh, good route, a very good career, but. He wasn't an empire, you know. He didn't just start out as Henry Ford. I, I 
you know, create this car line and, and I have this massive company. So there are so many, there's a million ways to make a buck. I love that saying because it's so true and I've been fortunate enough uh, that, that working in the financial planning industry that I see people from all walks of life who've made money, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy money, but it, it, it could be, all right, I, I, I did what I love, I invented something, or I created a new way of doing things, or I just went and I worked at this company I really liked for a long time, it was good for me, and, and then I, I was able to retire when I wanted to, and, and continue living my life, and I, I think it's important to make people at any age realize, live today and tomorrow, and find a way to do both, but do it without sabotaging either. Yeah. And you don't want to give up your time when you're young and, or not feel like you can enjoy your time when you're at re a retirement age. You, you, want to, you want to have both and in between and find a way to make it all work. And, and so, and Evan, to uh, to yeah. circle back, like that's actually a great circle back to the four hour work week because um, a lot of times people assume that they don't have the money to do it, that it's way too expensive, that taking a trip to this country or taking a motorcycle trip across China is the example he uses, that it would just be way too expensive. And he said you could do it for a few hundred bucks, and with the right. amount of right. money that you. The, and he's done it, so he, you know, he's not just like calculating this out. The amount of money that we throw away on things we don't need, things that don't, won't create a lasting experience for us, it's amazing. I mean, we all do it. So again, jumping back to that book, Tim Ferriss also talks about a concept of mini retirements where a person works for a while, saves some money, takes a mini retirement, and then works for a while. So it's not this one set standard plan of, all right, well, we've got to work our whole lives and then retire, and then we can do what we want to do. There are ways to do both. You just have to be able to think, like Evan said, the entrepreneurial mindset of thinking outside the box and looking to create a way to do something different, even when there's no easier direct route presented in front of you. Right, and, and I think that if you make a plan and you start thinking about who you are, what do you want to do, and how do you want to live your life as early as possible, and it's never too late, either, you you start making things happen, you create options for yourself, and uh, the, one of the best things in life is having the option to choose how you go about your day, mm -hmm. and so it's a very powerful thing, and too often we don't think about it at all, mm -hmm. or, or we think about it, oh, I'll think about that later, and, and, and then we get to later, and then we're upset that we didn't think about it till later. And so you can't get upset with yourself if, if you didn't really think about creating options for yourself until later on in life because you're already there. Just try to figure out options now. And if you're younger, then don't think, well, I have all the time in the world to, to figure out options. It just makes, for me, every day better to consistently think how can I improve or, or what else could I be doing to to get to where I want to be or to be able to do all these wonderful things I want to do. So uh, I, I think I think that's all I have to say on <laughs> on the subject. And in, unless you had something else, man. I was gonna yeah, I think it'll be good to wrap up soon because I I'm working on getting to bed earlier, so this is <laughs> so this will be good timing for us to close out. But um, when you said just about not uh, not thinking that, oh, I'll just do it all later. So for the, the specific audience of this podcast, for the young adults who are about to graduate, who've just graduated, I'll tell you my mentality. So I, so I graduated with $80,000 of student loan debt. My idea was pay that off as quick as possible and then t uh, save a bunch of money and travel around the world. Now the travel around the world piece, I'm still very much planning on and but again, in working to find ways to do it, I found a job that allows me to do a lot of international travel and 50% of the year. So there's ways to combine the things that you want and work towards the things that you ultimately want. But just a, a big message here is 
don't wait. And one of the biggest reasons that I didn't want to learn about a 401k, about a Roth IRA, about savings plan was it scared me. It honestly was an area that I was uncomfortable with. It's an area that I knew I didn't know anything about. And I was like, I've got my whole life to save. You know, why waste my time now when I could either pay off my loans faster or have an experience? And thank God I have Evan as a financial advisor, my dad having his uh, financial experiences to share with me because they helped me to realize the importance. I still, I still hesitated and I still pushed back. And then finally one day I sat down with Evan and we talked about compounding and we talked about how this grows and how you're able to donate to your, uh, yeah, donate money into your 401k. It sounds like the not wrong donate, word. Contribute. contribute. Thank you. I was like, it's like, well, you're not, I'm not donating myself, but, um, so you're, contribute. You're a charity of you, Brian. Exactly. I'm giving to the charity of me, but, but to contribute to your 401k, how it compounds, how you can give just a little bit of your paycheck every month that you don't even see to this and it grows throughout your life. So you've got that. It's amazing. And so Evan and I, like Evan will be on the show plenty, like where we'll dig into specific financial concepts to help you guys learn it a bit faster than I did. But I'll tell you, one of the biggest reasons I avoided it was fear. And don't be afraid. Just start educating yourself. And you could learn something new every single day and it could literally be, what's a 401k? Google search 401k. You read the well, three, Brian, three, yeah. Brian, I, I think this is a huge topic. I don't mean to cut you off, but I think this is a huge topic. It would need its whole podcast for. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I'm just, I'm, cl- I'm closing out on the, the idea. Just the fact that you okay. could learn something new every day that you can Google what is a 401k one day read the definition and go, okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Then, hey, it's coming up for time to uh, apply for your benefits for the upcoming year. Then you go, you know what? All right, I learned a little bit about 401k. Let me dig in more. Let me ask my friend who's a financial advisor. And slowly you'll build that knowledge you need to make the most informed decisions for yourself. And uh, so, yeah. So I think I think we'll, we'll close it out there. But so, Evan, any closing thoughts? And I would say... Um, what advice would you give to parents and kids who are about to have conversations about their future or uh, that may be avoiding the conversation, maybe the parents or the kids are, what, what advice would you give them in terms of how to approach that conversation about what it is you want to do with the rest of your life? I would say both sides, just listen, really work on saying, is that what you really mean or, um, Am I understanding this correctly? Tell me, tell me how you how you're going to make this work. I'm really, you know, I support you. I'm, I really want you to be happy. Um, and I, I'd also say, be open to someone else's opinion. Um, don't just think, yeah, I'm right. And and don't get me wrong. I, I definitely said, well, I'm not listening to them, and I'm. I'm going to move on and do whatever it is I want to do, but be open to learning even from your parents, even though you've been around them for so many years. <laughs> they, you know, they still might have something to say that that could really help you on that that path. And and you can learn from anyone, and don't forget to never stop learning from people closest to you. Absolutely, and you know what, guys, and Evan and I were very fortunate, and are very fortunate to have. A supportive family network, one that's going to push us forward, that's going to support us in everything we do. And unfortunately, I know that's not the case for everyone. So if you know in your heart you're meant to do something, you can have these conversations, but ultimately you're an adult now. It's time for you to make the decisions for yourself, but also be responsible for the consequences. So that's a great way to close it out, Evan. I'm, I'm glad we finally did this. For uh, for all the listeners, um, all of the show notes will be on the blog post on overcominggraduation.com. Uh, these stream of consciousness podcasts are really new, and this is only the second one we've done. So I'd love to hear your feedback as listeners. So please feel free to reach out to me at brian at overcominggraduation.com. And uh, we'll be doing many more of these. Evan's going to be a frequent frequent guest on the show detailing lots of financial stuff that freaks me out and probably freaks a lot of you out that we can hopefully take that fear away from just by talking through it and hearing from an expert. So 
Evan, thanks again, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're an expert. Don't make that face. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go around claiming myself as an expert just yet, but but if, if you're going to give me a compliment, I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, so, Ev, thanks for being on the show, man. I love you, and uh, it was great talking to you. I love you, buddy. Happy to be a part of this, and uh, we'll definitely do this again soon. All right, man. Have a good night. All right, bye.